You're watching The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler at your mom's house. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. I'm Ryan Sickler. I'm doing it over here at your mom's house. You can find me on all social media at Ryan Sickler. My website's ryansickler.com. Everything you need to find is there. Uh, I want to tell you about some road dates this week, June 13th and 14th and 15th. I'm out there with your boy T-Nuts on the road. Uh, Richmond, Virginia on the 13th. Hanover, Maryland on the 14th. Atlantic City on the 15th. A couple weeks later, Teddy Loons is back out on the road taking me with him. Uh, Tulsa, Wichita, and Kansas City the 27th to the 29th. August 1st through 3rd, I'm in uh, Minnesota. And September 14th. I'm doing a Baltimore show. Um, And as I say every week, I want to thank every single one of you for the messages, the positive comments, the feedback, the emails, all of it. I really appreciate it. Please make sure you're subscribed to the show. Download it, review it, and make sure you're subscribed to the Your Mom's House YouTube channel, all right? You can get full video of uh, The Honeydew every Tuesday. Audio comes up on Mondays. And if you're new to the show, website is thehoneydewpodcast.com. Everything's there, all the social media icons, how to follow. You can go subscribe to YouTube right there. It's all there. If you're new to the show, what we do here is we laugh in the face of adversity. We're looking for a little bit of that light in the darkness. And I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. And today I'm very excited to introduce my guest, first time on The Honeydew. Please welcome Brad Williams. Hey, what's up, buddy? My man. How are you doing, brother? This podcast today is sponsored by Fila. Fila for all your sweatshirt needs. <laughs> 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 feel it, man. Um, first of all, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. I was excited to see you the other night, and I've been wanting you to come on. And before we get into anything, please sure. feel free to promote whatever you'd like. All right, let's plug it. Uh, I've got my own podcast called the About Last Night Podcast. I, Great do, podcast. I, I do with Adam Ray. You've been on it se- uh, a couple times, actually. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're, we're we're still trying to find out if Ryan Sickler ever runs out of stories. So far, <laughs> I, I do negative. <laughs> we have not found the bottom of that barrel yet. Uh, and then, of course, on social media, uh, on Twitter at Funny Brad, on Instagram at, at Brad Williams Comic. All the tour dates are at bradwilliamscomedy.com. But as long as we're talking about where we're going to be, June twenty first through the 23rd i'm gonna be no june 21st to the 22nd i'm in alabama birmingham nothing controversial going on in alabama so people people just want to come out and laugh because it's a boring time over there no one's been talking about alabama Mm. nothing in the news i haven't seen a thing in the news so i'll be at the stardome comedy club in birmingham alabama june 21st to the 22nd june 23rd nashville tennessee zany's comedy club and then philadelphia i'll be coming to you june 27th through the 29th at Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia. Those are some dates, but all dates, bradwilliamscomedy.com. Cool. Go That's see the Brad plugs. live. Go see Brad live. That's fun. Um, I really appreciate you coming on. And I, you know, I say to every guest, throw me some stories. And you did. You threw me something that we're definitely going to get into. Sure, but, sure, um, sure. What I'd like to talk about, because I just have so many questions for you yeah. about growing up the way you grew up. So will you please. Jewish. Jewish, no. <laughs> um, you know, well to do a little bit. No, I'm not um, even Jewish. I don't know why I said that. You're not? <laughs> no. <laughs> I <laughs> just wishful thinking. I, I know. It's like, ah, oh, I need my jokes to be better, more well written. I just wish I was Jewish. <laughs> um, talk to us about what it was like growing up. Yeah. Uh, well, th- th- it's weird because uh, if, if you look at just the stats of my life growing up you wouldn't think i'd be a comedian because everyone always says oh comedians have to come from some kind of pain or torment or whatever the hell like that i i didn't uh i did not grow up poor uh i did not grow up with separate families uh parents love each other still together to this day uh grew up in orange county california dad lawyer mom housewife so on the surface yeah it's all good it's all uh be a beaver cleaver dad didn't have a drinking problem no one hit anybody no drug abuse we had dinner every night kind of disgusting really yeah it is. Uh, that sounds wonderful yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting misty eyed yeah, yeah yeah oh god that's so good oh 
Oh, you had, you, you, you had Sega Genesis? Oh, God. Oh, God. It's, it's weird because I, I talk to people that grew up with slightly di- different circumstances, and I go, how did you survive? And they go, I, I don't know how you survived with it, every, everyone just being happy all the time. Uh, really just uh, my the fact that I'm born with uh, achondroplastic dwarfism, so, that's, sort, that's sort of the weirdest thing in my say family. Say that again. What is it called? Achondroplastic dwarfism. I have achondroplasia. Uh, there's over 100 different types of dwarfism. I'm the most common type, uh, and that is characterized by uh, short limbs, average-sized torso, big-ass head, uh, collapsed huge nose cock. bridge. Huge cock. <laughs> Massive. <laughs> Dragging on the floor. Drag. You're like, oh man, this is a fox with a long tail. There's all these, there's all these, all these tracks in the snow. No, no, just a dwarf with a dick, my friend. Just a dwarf with a dick. That's me. Uh, so yeah, that is the kind of dwarfism I have. Um, uh, I'm, I'm four foot four right now. Uh, I was four foot four at like age, uh, age? 10, 11 or whatever. And that was it. You know, that was it. So going back to to birth sure. do, do they know before you're born that you have this is this something they can see prenatal or is yeah. this something that well funny story uh it is you can see you can tell that you're gonna have a dwarf child uh but my uh my family doctor did not tell my parents nah. oh get ready for this because he is a, a strict catholic and thought that if he told mom and dad that they'd be like oh well we don't want that so you know right vacuum that of, baby yeah. out of there uh by, by the way speaking of vacuum Which babies you should out be allowed of there, to do alabama uh, you i'll, I'll be, be in allowed. alabama at the start <laughs> of the comedy to club do that. in I'm birmingham speaking of vacuuming babies what's the matter birmingham, with you alabama, alabama. <laughs> what's wrong with you alabama <laughs> What if that was? What if that was just your segues for all your, your gigs? Promo where, your... where you're talking about. So my buddy Terry was convicted of a hate crime. Speaking of hate crimes, Baltimore. I'm coming Baltimore, to you. Doing six shows. Oh god. So yeah, the do- right. yeah the doctor so didn't wait, tell my so parents. So how? At what? How long in did he finally tell them? Uh, with like a month to go. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, by, oh, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he wanted to make sure that. Uh, they, and how did they, how they were turn. they when they heard the news? They were fine, but they weren't angry that he didn't share no. it sooner. Or? No, they weren't angry. Uh, in fact, my dad immediately started going uh, to because this is before the internet. So he started going to these uh, LPA meetings. LPA stands for Little People of America. And it's where uh, it's it's an organization to help little people. You know, we get some camaraderie with it. There's events. There's social aspects to it. Uh, a lot of uh, husbands and wives have met via LPA. A lot of orgies have happened via orgies, LPA. Really? I'll get into that a little bit. Later. <laughs> Please. <do. laughs> so LPA is a great organization. So and your dad shows up. Like, what the fuck are yeah. you doing here? Like, hang on, hang hold on, on, hang on, hold on. <laughs> and my dad would go to these meetings and. Um, he told he he told me this story where he he, he went to two meetings and uh, he he just heard a lot of little people bitch and complain about how hard their lives are and how annoying it is and then he stood up at the second meeting and went hey my name's uh, my name's Pete uh, I don't I'm I'm having a dwarf child I just found out I'm having a dwarf kid um, and all I've heard from you guys is how much it sucks uh, is there anything good about it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is yeah, there anything right, good I, right. I look forward to anything. And uh, one one of the little people there going to uh, can I ask you real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interrupt. Are you your father's? Are you your parents' first child at this point? Second. Okay. Yeah, uh, and that would they have two kids. I have my older sister, and that and then how far that's apart it. are you? Uh, Fifteen months, so we're pretty close Whoa. to Irish twins. Yeah, so it's like you are. So get it right out and away. Done. Here you come. Yeah. Okay. So and he's th- still a new dad at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still being a new dad to my sister. So. Uh, there was one dwarf who stood up in that meeting and said, well, the one good thing about being a little person is that nobody forgets you. Like once they meet you, they, they know you and you make an impression on people. And, and my dad really took that to heart. And he told me that throughout my entire life, like, Hey, you're not going to be forgotten. So make sure it's a good impression and use that to your advantage. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you yeah. could come across as that asshole. Yeah. yeah like, like, and then you yeah. come back and you're like, they're not going to remember that. Yeah. No, they're totally going to oh, remember that. remember your ass. Oh, yeah. no, no. Yo, they're going to forget that the midget shit in the fish tank. <laughs> 
<laughs> no. They're going to remember that the midget shit in the fish tank. <laughs> They're definitely going to remember <laughs> that the midget shit in the fish tank. <laughs> Which sounds like an old oh, colloquial. God. It sounds like it an does. old phrase that like no one oh, says anymore. Things like, are not good. Oh, right man. Now, man. The midget shit in the fish tank. <laughs> midget fish tank. <laughs> Midget fished the, the shit in the fish tank today. Did you see? Did you see the game the other night? Man, the Orioles really uh, shit. They, they were they were like the really midget the fish tank. tank. That, that, clo <laughs> that closer, man, that closer. God. Uh, so yeah, that 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 was the that was the introduction my parents had to LPA and uh, little people in general. And so this is not hereditary. Uh, it is, or it is, but it, um, it's a recessive gene. Uh, we don't know where it came from. In no terms one else of, in your family that you know. Have you guys done one. a tr family tree thing? Oh yeah, yeah. we've done all that. Uh, the only the only thing we haven't done is the paternity test. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so who knows? Don't just just keep away from that. <laughs> who <bro>? knows? Maybe <laughs> maybe my dad was on a business trip and Ringling Brothers, Barnum oh Bailey God. came through town. Maybe mom had some fun. I don't know. But uh, my dad's my dad. So there we go. Uh, so yeah, it, it was. Um, it, 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 it was something that was obviously new to them, and uh, they tried to find out the most about it, which I, I really appreciate in hindsight because I've seen a lot of uh, average-sized parents have dwarf children and then have no knowledge about it and then just try to parent by either hiding the kid and being like, no, you can't do anything because you're disabled or you're sensitive, or just being like, no, you can do anything but not taking in – any consideration at all like no no no, no. do those weights you're fine yeah. you know or whatever yeah, right. yeah, play football play football all right maybe pole vault yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah yeah play football you're fine no my parents were very realistic with my with their expectations of what i can and can't do and uh that that was really good that 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 helped growing up so did they try to treat you in a way where you weren't I, I know what you're saying. There's let's be obvious about things like you're saying. Sure. But in a way where you weren't like, were you putting sports right away? Were you playing? Yeah. Uh, you know, doing everything. Like, what were you doing? Oh, uh, I, I was in all the clubs and everything like that. Play, uh, play baseball, basketball, uh, hockey. Uh, my 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 dad tells this story about when I started playing t-ball, and uh, my aunt and uncle came to watch one of my games, and uh, I ran out to him. And this is how they didn't make dwarfism like a huge deal because I ran out to my aunt and uncle and I'm like, Hey, Aunt Nate, Uncle Steve, uh, thanks for coming to watch my game. I'm going to be playing. I'm, I'm going to be playing out there. You can tell it's me because I'm number three. <laughs> <laughs> and my aunt and uncle and several adults around them apparently just burst out laughing because they're like, ah, I think we'll be able to spot you. Or not. Or not. Hey, we're missing some eye in left field, man. No, Brad's out there. Hey, when Brad's you see the grass <laughs> rustling in left field, that's me running around trying to make a play. The ball just comes shooting out of the grass like that. That's not Fern Goalie launching the ball back. That's Brad. He's that's down Brad there. Brad throwing that back in. <laughs> well, you shoot, Brad. I yeah, can't, yeah, yeah. I can't even He's see down it. there. I can't even see it. it, it the, well, one of the best parts that I that – I look back on uh, and I kind of realized what was happening is uh, like I was on several different sport teams where they like at the end of the year, you give kind of awards to all the kids and be like, hey, you know, like if it's baseball, you had the best arm or you were, you know, the hardest hitter, or Charlie Hustle, you know, right. stuff like that. I got the same award every year. Most L lion heart. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say most difficult strike zone. <laughs> I got the same award every year. Just like, Lion heart. Oh, man, he tries. <laughs> They're sitting home trying to figure out what they could come up with. <laughs> he tries so hard. Oh, man. I mean, you know, Terry, he hits <laughs> he hits the ball. But Brad, Brad really tries. So, yeah, that, oh my God. that was me for all of my sports. <laughs> Lionheart. <laughs> was there ever a moment where, and I'm sure you're a comedian, so I know I, that my answer here, but what sure. sort of moments have you used it to – make you know make people to your advantage and make people uncomfortable or like lay oh, into it and all the time yeah well here's the thing is that thank god my parents like yes they encouraged me to try everything and do and and do things but there was always the reality of the situation of yes you are a little person don't think you're not you know the, the, and and so they temper expectations. They oh, weren't yeah. just, you can be whatever you want. No, because right I want to be a football player. <laughs> right, and my dad's like, 
That's not going to work. He wasn't that guy that's like, you can do anything. No, there's obviously things I cannot do. You could placehold, though. Yeah, I could placehold like my, a motherfucker. I could do that right now, too. Yeah, I could, I, I, I could placehold place standing up. <laughs> <laughs> Two hands. <laughs> I got it. I got I got that. Please don't stand up. I got that shit, man. We're calling a specialist. Oh, sure, that's what we shit. call him. You know, if you stab at the Brad, we got the option to pass it. He holds it with two hands. So let's let's keep that under our hats. He does that. Holy um, shit. So yeah, uh, but also one thing that my dad did, which uh, was really great, is he kind of inadvertently trained me how to be a comedian. Because my dad would make fun of me as a kid with the knowledge of I'm prepping you. Yeah. Because when you get to school, other kids are going to make fun of you. So I don't want you to be shocked by this. So he would make fun of me and then be like, all right, now I just made fun of you. So hit me back with something. So we would have these games where like he'd be making fun of me. I'd hit, I'd hit him back with insults. And it was fun for me. So by, so by the time I got to school, you go to kindergarten and the kindergartners who don't know what a little person is, they come up and start asking weird questions or make or make or making fun of you it's a game to me it, it's this game i've already well, played i'm glad because kids are brutally oh. off because they don't know they, don't they know. really want to ask questions and they're yeah. genuinely like well that's different to me so i got to talk yeah. about that and ask about that and, and, and that's one thing you realize as i got older is many kids aren't doing it to be mean they're doing it because they they don't know and they don't have the social constructs yet sure. to, to be like, oh, maybe don't ask the person about their uh, discoloration of skin, or may, you know, like uh, uh, my uh, my my dad tells a story about my sister where one time uh, we they were in the supermarket, and this is back in the days of uh, pay, uh, pagers and beepers, mm -hmm. and this woman was very overweight. And uh, her beeper started going off. And my sister, who was like maybe like four or five, goes, Dad, I think she's backing up. <laughs> <laughs> and the woman just turns around like, and, he's, and my dad, ha, I, I, she says that to every every person. <laughs> that's our go-to. Yeah, that's our go-to. She's, back, she's backing up. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, so there, there, there was always that of, of, I understood the kids were just kind of, they're just being curious. They don't know. And I liken it to like, as an adult, we're aware of things now, but if someone walked up to you who had something that you have literally never seen before, you would probably have some questions for them. Someone had a third arm coming out of their head and was like using it. You'd be like, like, all right, I got. Can I ask you about that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up there well, what's, up with the, what's up with the arm? <laughs> the one that's shuffling peanuts in its hand. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. Man. I don't know. Uh, I don't know uh, what you're talking about. It's like, no, nah, the, the arm. It's coming out of your head. So, uh, yeah, and, and then kids knew real fast because the kids that did make fun of me, I would have jokes to come back at them with that literally my dad and I would work together on writing. Yeah. So we would have those comebacks just fucking, assassins. fucking chambered. Yeah. So you, you, you weren't, you weren't going to throw me off. So like kids knew real quick, oh, wait, don't make fun of Brad because then he'll make Be you friends cry. with Brad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be friends with Brad. <laughs> He's good. You know, so uh, yeah, I, I, I tell people dwarfism never really affected me in terms of a negative way or, or where I really saw it as a negative until I got to high school. And then I was just friend zone like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was the friend zone king. Like, oh man. <laughs> that's when I that's when I first realized, like, oh, if I want to get laid, I gotta make a lot of money. Like, I gotta work hard and I gotta find this whatever it is I'm gonna do and and be successful at it. Cause then we'll come back then, to then this. I'll be good. But you've also told me before on Crab Feast episodes that yeah. you were bucket list for some girls too. So yeah. We'll come back to that. Yeah. But let's go back to that's, friend zone. That, that that that's post twenties. Post twenties, yes. So you're bucket in list. you go elementary, middle, and and mostly you're Fine. not being bullied or teased because no. already you've developed the thick skin and you're fighting back and they're like, yeah. we're just not gonna fuck with Brad. I, I was all right, you know, there was yeah yeah, there was one time when a new kid, like uh, it was in third grade, it was, eh, statue of limitations, I've forgiven him. Uh, his name's uh, My uh, Michael Cordero, and uh, we were playing at recess, and I threw a touchdown pass, like as the bell was ringing, I chucked a touchdown pass, so we won the game that day. And then he, uh, he didn't like that, so uh, he uh, uh, 
all all the kids were going in and then he waited for the kids to go in and he wanted to talk to me and and then he like he waited for the kids to leave and then he just he he just he just put a beating on me he he beat you up yeah yeah Why? yeah because what he felt embarrassed that yeah you beat him or something something like that but then damn it became real clear to him that you don't do that uh and get away with it at this school like all the teachers loved me principals right. loved me other kids loved me so like he was kind of shunned after that and you know suspended but uh for the most like and Good. then and then and then when he got back it, he was very apologetic and his mom came to school with him to be like you apologize to that so like it all it all worked out i think he's doing fine so it's fine but uh yeah it, it's uh that was the only time really but um for, for, the, for the most part it was pretty great it was pretty great growing up. Like I said, great family. So um, you get to high school, and are you, like, hanging out with the dudes on the teams and stuff like that? You yeah. You probably know a lot of people from the middle school that are going yeah. there, too, so you already have friends. Oh, but, no. But the new crop of girls. Yeah, and, high school was fun because I was- Where'd for, you go? Uh, Sunny Hills High School in Fullerton. It's the name that sounds, sounds like a retirement home. Sunny okay. Hills. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we, we were actually famous- Wait, for, what's your uh, mascot? Uh, they're called the Lancers. The Sunny Hill Lance. You got two fucking. Things. Yeah, it's yeah. That is weird. Na names. Not I know weird. Lancer. We had one Ligonor. It was a. It's a knight. With yeah. The, yeah. There you go. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's uh. So we were famous for two things. One, uh, they made the Newsweek list of like the best high schools in America. Sunniest hills. The sunniest hills. <laughs> and then two, there was uh, some murders that took place there. At your school? Yeah. Like, what? Th this was before I got there, way before I got there. <laughs> yeah, they're laughing at people <laughs> dying. Uh, there was some murders. Um, they made a movie about it. It was like... It was they, a movie made about your high school yeah, murders? Yeah, they were called the, the, the Honor Roll Murders. I think... I think that I think that's what they were. They're called like the honor roll murders, or the like. It was, it it was affluent kids who were studying hard, and something happened. I I should look up the story, but yeah, I don't know. You got Google on that fucking thing. Maybe get up off your ass and open up a window. Stop laughing in there and look up these deaths. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, they were, uh. So that that that's what our high school was famous for. Uh. But yeah, went there. That was prior to you getting there, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now they're famous for Brad Williams. No, they're not. They're, they don't care. Have they done anything to honor you? No, 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 no. no they don't care. They, they, they've had more people go there. It's fine. I think uh, Mark McGuire went to high school there. <laughs> so, you know, home, home run king, whatever. But uh, yeah, so uh, I got there, and then you start being interested in girls, and I realized real fast, like, oh, they don't, they don't want none of this. They don't want anything to do with that. Uh, so I would have to wait until the summer where I would go to the dwarf conventions. And there we go. Wait, you you did? Oh, yeah. Where are they? Uh, they change every year. What? Um, every year when did location. you start going to those? Oh, and I was like seven, seven, eight years old. My family would bring me. So I would make. So I would also understand that there would be other little people out there that I knew I wasn't alone. Gotcha. And uh, they did that, and it was fantastic. I got to know friends, some of which I'm still friends with to, to this day. Oh, that's great. Uh, and was this sort of, can I ask you some questions? Yeah, yeah, about, yeah, fire away. Was this just like a, a meeting, or you go for a weekend, or what is? You go for a week. A and full week? Yeah, like full a week. Yeah, it, it really is. And you were a, ch a kid when you started going, like middle mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. and they're all around the U.S.? Yeah, uh, the big one is every summer. There's like the national convention. I believe this year it's in San Francisco. Uh, but yeah, we always did our family vacation around the dwarf Dude, convention. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, so we'd go and then we'd go see all the things in the city. Um, but then there's regional conventions every uh, every few months that are like just like the California little people, and they're just for a weekend, not the full week. But you go for the week, and there's there's uh, workshops, there's uh, s clothing exchanges, doctor's visits, uh, sporting events. Oh, Sp wow. Sporting events are hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> when, when you... No, and, we're from the local chapter. Yeah, yeah, Down yeah. in Fullerton, man. Yeah, we got yeah. a squad. Hilarious. Cause, what sports are they playing? Oh, okay. Well, first of all, we, we like, the... the the official sport of the little people. Yeah, what is it? It's a uh, bocce ball. <laughs> we are great. <laughs> we are great at bocce ball. 
We'll own your ass in bocce ball. I gotta think you'd be good at mini golf. Yeah, too, they don't bro. do mini golf. They See, do bocce They ball? do golf. Are you good at bocce? I am good at bocce. Are you? I am good. Yeah. I love bocce. Ball. It's a great. It's, out, it's I, a great. Backyard I always looked game. at it as an old man's game, but now yeah. I see it as a little person's game. It, it really is. That's how by I the way, you're also it. the one that educated me, and I was humiliated and embarrassed when you told me because I was probably in my third, late thirties, early forties. Yeah. I've always thought the low urinal was for kids. Yeah. And you were like, uh -uh. Ryan, you didn't say it's also for, you're like, that's my fucking That's toilet. my bitch. <laughs> All right. And I was like, oh, Not yeah. for kids. That's mine. You may think it's for little kids. Nah, that's mine. All right. Um, back to bocce. That's the official sport. Yeah. But there's all sorts of sports. They do track and field. They do basketball. They do soccer. Like they do... Uh, oh, and then also a lot of dwarves are good at powerlifting. We're really good at powerlifting. That's how I made a lot of friends in high school. That's how I made friends. You powerlifted in high school? Fuck yeah! Because well, like I was. You got there doing clean and jerks. And I was mornings and shit. Fifteen years old benching two fifteen. Were you really? Yeah. Holy shit, and like, dude. And like the football players, like the <laughs> yeah. wide receivers are like, what the fuck? You had like, to get 225 to get on our fucking wall. You're only yeah. 10 pounds away. Yeah. At how old? Uh, so that's 15. 15 years sophomore yeah. in college, uh, high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Holy shit. So I was just like, like, and people would be like, well, his arms are small. I'm like, yeah, but the biceps. The were strength like in those little motherfuckers. That big is my bicep, okay? <laughs> Come on. I'm an all-state holder, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Two hands. Perfected the technique. Invented. Holy um, shit. So, yeah. Uh, there, yeah, that's how I made friends there. But, yeah, so so you do sporting events. And I'll, I'll tell you this right now. Oh, yeah, and there's, and there's a swimming, too. But there's, there is nothing funnier than a dwarf track meet. Nothing. I love that you're saying that. Nothing. Nothing better than that. Oh, when that – because – Dwarves have a certain way we run. I didn't know this until uh, the local news, OCN, Orange County News Network, did. We we had a we had a local track meet and they went out and covered it. And I was it was like my first time being on TV. I was on the news and I was running on the news, and they showed me running and I. Then I knew, like, oh, we look fucked up. <laughs> That's the first time you'd seen yeah, yourself. Yeah, <laughs> like, I didn't know that I looked, like, I, I thought that was just the other dwarves that looked like right, that. Right, look at these So, <laughs> no, that's me too. So, when we run, like, your legs go in front of the other like that. Mine are just kicking out to Outside. the side. They're kicking out to the side like that. I didn't think I did that. I definitely do. Uh so yeah, it's, a, it's so then when you get a, a meet and you got like eight lanes of dwarves, which sounds like a really cool whorehouse, uh, <laughs> eight lanes of dwarves, and you, when that star pistol goes off, holy shit, you die laughing. Like Are you doing you, a full lap all the way around a yeah, regular track. Like, <laughs> took us three days. <laughs> <laughs> it was, break it up in the same. yeah it was a ma it was a marathon in the truest oh sense my God. No, but yeah, yeah, you, 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 you could do the 40 meter dash it wouldn't be a hundred you do a 40 oh, it's man. not bad you know uh so it, 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 it was pretty great man and that, that that's where i met a lot of friends had a lot of social interaction and like i said like they dress up these conventions as like all these positive things with sports and workshops and doctors and stuff like that. But really it's for boning. It's just, for, it is, it's huh? for boning. That's what it's, it's for. cause it's, you gotta understand something. It's a bit of a mind fuck because the whole year you're the friend zone guy or the, or the friend zone girl or the, or the, or the, or the, or the strange fetish in some cases. And then you go to these conventions oh, yeah. and you're hot. You are, Desired. you are sexy. You're like, like there would, I, I found out later, like years later, there were like uh, groups of dwarf women that were like taking bets on who would take my virginity. Like, really? Yeah, because I was like a stud there. Because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty athletic. Uh, so, and I don't, I don't have, I've only had one dwarf related surgery on my, uh, on my ankle, and it really didn't affect my mobility all that much. So, I'm, I'm healthy that's it all your life good. yeah 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 so i'm healthy relatively good looking so uh yeah i was i was fucking right. i was fucking the, the right. girl the girls loved me back so then. i'm gonna ask you questions yeah, how yeah. old were you when you lost your virginity 20 now you've heard this story before oh, it's been a while on so. a previous podcast but uh yeah i lost my virginity at age 20 because i was uh i was going through uh you know i was i was friend zone and then uh so you're in college yeah, and I had this I had this dwarf girlfriend 
who was very religious, and we had been dating for two years. And uh, she finally was like, all right, she was living in San Francisco, and she's like, all right, I'm, I, I, obviously you, you, you and I are something real. I'm ready. And I was like, fuck, yes, here we go. The next weekend, I was like, I'm in San Francisco. And she told me, she's like, all right, my, my parents are going away. For the weekend, so I got the house to myself. And, and I'm did like, you meet at a convention originally? Yeah, okay. yeah, we met at a convention originally. So you had known her for a little bit. Yeah, okay. I known her for a few years, and then we decided to start dating. And uh, so I, I go up there, and uh, so we're we're gonna do the thing. We got the night all picked out, and then as the music's playing, as the fucking key sweat is, I <laughs> love you like a man, nobody. Ain't listen, nobody. listen. That's good. We all had our fuck tapes in high school. Uh, yeah. You made a fuck tape. He swear. Everybody made a fuck For tape. Sure. All right. So like, you got that going, and she goes, "Hold on." She gra she grabs my hand. She goes, "I need you to pray." And I was like, wait, what? I've been praying for this I'm, pussy for fucking 20 <laughs> goddamn years. <laughs> well, now we got to pray for real. So uh, she made me naked pray. Wait, hold on. For real? Yeah, because we were. I do not remember this story. We you're, had been you're kissing. <laughs> Things are getting going. So it's not before you start no, foreplay. It's no. before you actually have sex. It's, yes. <laughs> foreplay has happened. I'm ready. Okay? And then I'm ready to do the thing. She goes, I need you to pray. And I'm like, whoa, for? Like, I got the erection. Praying's yeah, done. Yeah. <laughs> and my prayers are answered. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Boing. So I'm like, I'm like, what are we going to pray for? And she goes, you need to ask uh, for forgiveness uh, to God for what we're about to do and tell him why we're doing this. And I'm like, this is a lot to be putting on yeah, me. Yeah, for real. At game time. The dick ain't gonna stay hard for Yeah, <laughs> like, granted, thankfully I'm 20, so the dick is still like, nah, we're good, bro. We're good. Now, I'd be like, there's a timer. The clock's ticking. You don't have that long. <laughs> I like to do my prayer post -court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can, we, can we do like the football players do and I'll make a circle yeah, right. after the game? Midfield, right. <laughs> take a knee. Can we do that. So uh, we had to do that. So we, uh, she made so me naked pray. naked you're praying. Are naked. you on your knees? Yeah. <laughs> She's on her knees too, not in a good way. And uh, yeah, next to we're, you. we're praying. And I, I, I remember saying something. Apparently, I said something good because, man, the sex for for losing your virginity was pretty, it was pretty, damn, was pretty good. damn good. Pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. So, uh, yeah, I, I said something like, God, you know, we're doing this not to spite you, but to honor you because you put us together. And that, 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 it was, it was I'm going to use good. that next time. Pretty good. Pretty that good. Pretty solid. So I uh, did that prayer, and uh, then uh, so you were both virgins, sex. right? She was a virgin yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then we and then, then we got to uh, we got to do and we got to do the sex, and it was great. It was great. And then uh, about six months after that, uh, I started going on the road doing stand up, and she made me be like, "You're it's either the stand up or me," and I was like deuces <laughs> see ya. See ya. so uh yeah but uh she, she she's a good person she had a good life uh so yeah uh that, that, that that's that's so how it, that's how it went up until that point so once you lost your virginity were yeah. you then just hooking up left and right every time you went to the convention every summer or bro. <laughs> what's the what's bro. the damn broke the, what happened the, the, the stats <laughs> no one's got dwarf stats like me i'll bet no one if you are if you are a, a little person and a woman between the ages right now of 30 and 40 and you went to any convention i've been inside you, you got <laughs> you got some brad stank on you <laughs> you got you got you got some brad stank Oh God! I laid. <laughs> I love it. I laid waste. There's, there's killing it, fields of dwarf <laughs> pussy. <laughs> just, dwarf pussy. <laughs> I'm just laid. I laid waste to it. <laughs> oh, God. I, I did my thing. I didn't get. I didn't get laid. I from figure. A yeah, yeah. I didn't right. get laid from a tall woman until I was like 24, That's what 25. I ask you, how old was your first tall woman? Yeah, 24. Yeah, 24. How'd you meet her? Uh, that was on the road doing stand-up. And, uh, man. Okay, so I found out. So, <laughs> once I said, because I had told this woman that 
I had never been with a tall woman before. All right, before you say anything else, yeah. let me ask you this. Yeah. Had you wanted to be? Yeah. Okay. I Of course. You always, you always want to know what's up. You well, know? some people, even they don't like tall people, short people, yeah. skinny people, fat people, whatever. I, 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 I figured I would always end up with a dwarf because I, I thought that's the only person who could truly understand me, which is ironic because no, uh, that's not who I ended up marrying. But uh yeah, uh So you told her. Yeah, I, I told her like Wait, yeah, hold on, I've let's never talk, been. Let's talk about how it goes down. Oh, sure. You, you're at a show. Yeah. And she comes up to you after? Oh no, I had a I had a shtick that I would do. This is, <laughs> cause I cause this is back when I was a feature act. This is if any feature acts or hosts are watching this, this is what you do, okay? You go on stage, you you, you hopefully do well. Yeah, murder it. And then run to the bathrooms. Cause at one point, oh, they're all getting up and going. They got to They got to take a break, either after you, before the headliner, or sometimes during the headliner. Just like, hey, I've been, I've been, I've been already sitting here for sixty minutes. I gotta go. So, yeah, stay by the bathrooms. They always come by the bathrooms. So uh, I ended up talking to this one girl, and uh, she had, she had just broken up with the boyfriend. He had bought the tickets, and then she went anyway. And, by yourself. Uh, yeah. Wow. And uh, I love when people go to shows by themselves. Right. I think it's the fucking best. I used to think it was stupid to go to movies by yourself Hell when I was no. younger. Now I'm like, oh, it's the best. Yeah. Plus, look at all you miss if you don't go. I've been to ball games by myself, right. movies by myself, stand up shows, even before I was a yeah. comic by myself. No, yeah, go. I love it. Just go. Have yep. fun. Um, concerts, the whole thing. So, like, concerts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> it's a lot fucking so, cheaper. So I remember I, I told her at one point during the conversation, like, hey, I, I've never been with a tall woman before. And that was it. She's like, well, tonight, is motherfucker, your is night. your night. Had she been with a dwarf before? No. So that that was that. So a then first going on here. So on then the once that worked, I was using that line every night. You know, oh, I've never been with a tall <laughs> woman before. <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, I'm working on pitching a perfect week that week. Just having one a night so and what was that like were you nervous where'd you go oh for the first time yeah did oh. you go back to her place did she come uh, no, to your hotel? I went, went back to the hotel room uh yeah that that's the other thing guys is uh i mean now i guess for uber you you, you can go to the woman's place or apartment or whatever house and you and you're good because you have uber but man back in the day before uber you were taking because I've had times on the road where, like, the girl says, come to my place. And then I go, and then she gets passed out afterward. And I'm like, hey, I got a, I got a flight. If you could, uh, I just, yeah. just go. <laughs> yeah, just go. I'm like, ah, oh, I got a 6 a.m. If we can get going, I call a cab. You call a cab. It did too far. You know, I think, <laughs> like, no. Yeah, I, I, I've had times where I've had to wake up feature acts, like, that like who lived in the area and be like, bro, I know it's 4 a.m., but you got to get me. So they have to come pick me up. And it's before like, you know, this is when we had MapQuest. We had to like print out the directions, yeah, get somewhere, have them in their pasture seat, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that, that that's that's how the single life went. But it was it, it was a damn good time. So then once you had had uh, sex with a tall woman, yeah. what was your back and forth like? Did you then start oh. more? Like, what's your, what's your statistically, what's oh, your man. ratio? Now more? I'm, I'm probably like 75% tall now. Really? Yeah, I've definitely overcome those numbers. Uh, but yeah, it's 75, 80% tall women. And it, yeah, because then once it, dude, getting laid for guys is like a video game where you're starting off with the level and then all of a sudden, uh, the thing comes out of the wall and kills you. And you're like, all right, there's a thing right there that comes out of the wall and kills you. So then you're going back and then you're like, all right, so I'm going to duck around that thing. And then the thing comes down and Squishes smashes you. you. And you're yeah. like, okay, so go out there, get the guy under that, and then do this. And you, you're, you're figuring this out. That's just how out. you take a bra off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was struggling at first. Like, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Some guy told me it's like snapping your fingers. And I'm like, bro, it's not like genie. Like, ha. Like, it's not. You can't. That doesn't work. Yeah, it's something else. But anyway. Uh, so, yeah. Like, you get to know, you know, the things that you say then and how and how to talk to women. It's trial and error. You know, I'm sure it's the same thing. 
not as hard, but when girls talk to guys or whatever, you it, know, it's you, just, you just have to learn. It is hard. It's all about who you are and how you handle that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. You mentioned orgies at this thing. You yeah. said what you'll get to. So let's, where, where is this? <laughs> Dwarf orgies, man. <clears throat> um, at the convention or, yeah. or are you all met and then went outside? <laughs> said, no, fuck no. Yeah, fuck confidence. yeah. Convention, bro. <laughs> where are they doing? In, in the <laughs> hotel room, bro. <laughs> One person. Listen. Like, back at 365, yeah, everybody. Like, because here's the thing is we don't. Like y- y'all tall people, you gotta sleep at the long way on the bed. We go sardine <laughs> style. We're lined up, man. You got you go into the convention. You wanna have a cheap hotel room. It's like when you go and your boys and you go to Vegas and you're but you're like in your twenties. You don't have money yet. Laying on the floor. Yeah, you're yeah. where where dwarves hoodies, just dwarves just sit sleep sardine style. So we'd have to want we don't we want a cheap hotel room in our early twenties. So yeah, we would just sleep sardine style and have an orgy. Mixed. So yeah. You've been part of an, a, a dwarf orgy. Yeah, like uh Good for you, bro. I think, I think I think 6 was the most we got one time, but uh yeah. 6 of you. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even get over that. It was That's awesome. Fantastic. It's like that that would be what, what, what we did there would be the most popular thing ever on Pornhub. Oh god. Like man. it really would be. Cuz they cuz they got single You're shot probably dwarf sex. Somebody's gonna reach out to you and be right. like, "Hey man, uh, can we do this again?" Can we recreate that. <laughs> god. Steve Steve Hirsch from Vivid. Where you at, brother? <laughs> you I've got a name. number. <laughs> we all have a number. If you can hit that number, we're doing this shit. You know, <laughs> we're going to call that tape Ma- Malibu house. Cause that's what it's going to take to buy me. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it was, it was a good time, man. It was great. So, uh, and then, then the career just keeps kind of slow, slowly moving up and doing well. And, uh, now, now it's crazy. Cause now I'm getting like, I'm getting little people coming to my shows. They're like, you're our you're our dude like we yeah, we, fuck yeah. we don't have a guy or a girl out there who's doing talking. That? i mean uh, in terms of comedians it's me it's tanya lee davis who's fucking hilarious i gotta give shout out to her because every time i think i'm the first dwarf to do something she's done it you right. know like she she got, she has her name on the comedy store but way before me she would tour way before me tanya lee davis funny as hell still doing it uh and yeah and there's a couple other dwarf comics doing it um but for the most part, we don't have a lot of voices, so I, I I get a lot of little people come to my shows and just be like, "Dude, you're you're a guy. You're the one." And one thing I love about comedy is now it's not a producer or a writer or a director who's not a little person saying what they assume the dwarf experience is like. Now I'm I'm writer, director, yeah, actor, I mean, like everything. You should be. So it's authentic when I'm on stage right. to what the actual thing is, not what you assume it's like. So yeah, it, it's been it's been a fantastic ride so far, man. Dude, that's fucking awesome. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, um, it's fun. Here's a question I wanted to ask you: Outside of the conventions that you eventually went to mm-hmm. as a kid, did you were there any other dwarves in your schools or anywhere yeah. you went? Yeah, there was the Becker family. I was very lucky because my high school had three dwarves at the same time going to the school. You plus three, or you me, and, two? and then two others who were brother and sister. Okay. Uh, the Becker family, and uh, which is weird because I had known uh, the girl Sandy. Uh, I had known her my whole life, so she was like a sister to me. And everyone, everyone just kind of wanted us to date because they're like, "Well, you got." I mean, come on, yeah, math adds up. I mean, you're a dwarf. She's a dwarf. Do you need anything else? Yeah, yeah, you need a couple other things. So, um, so, but uh, the 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 funniest part to me was uh, we we went to a dance together one time, San, uh, Sandy and I, and it was the our version of the Sa- Sadie Hawkins or the Ski Bum. We called it Ski Bum. Or the uh, girl asks the yeah, boy. Yeah, girl, girl asked the guy. She asked me. I was, I was like, hell yeah, let's do the thing. So, and you're supposed to like wear the same outfit. That's, uh, you know, you... Oh, I didn't know that. Is that the thing? At, at our school, it was you wear the same shirt or the, the same whatever. And it was a Hawaiian theme. So... I got the idea that since everyone always confuses me with her brother and me, like all dwarves look alike, that I would dress up like her and she would dress up <laughs> like me. So 
There's <laughs> somewhere out there. There's photos of this. Oh, I would of love me to see that. In like a Hawaiian halter top, and a long blonde wig, and her in the in the backwards white uh, angels hat that I would always wear. Uh, cause it was like, uh, uh, cause I was a fan of the band Limp Biscuit, and I was like, well, I'm not gonna be a Yankee fan, so I'm gonna do back with white angels hat. I'm from Anaheim. What's up? Uh, so I would do that, and then she's got the the hat on and like the guy's button up shirt. Yeah. And no joke, people came up to me and like, Sandy, what's <laughs> up? And I'm like, mother. <laughs> I was like, we were both getting mad. <laughs> We thought it'd be something where people would be like, oh, that's oh, clever. Oh, you guys are hilarious. Yeah, yeah. that's what, that's what I thought this. it would be. But it was like, what? You're not Brad? I'm si I've got tits. Send your, send your voice got a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? Um, oh, my so, God. So, yeah, it was hilarious. So, yeah, uh, thankfully, I had a lot of dwarf friends growing up. So, we always had sort of those similar experiences and we could share and talk and talk about it you said that. where growing up from the yeah the they yeah they were living in Buena park california okay so they were local down enough. the street all from right. fullerton where i grew up anaheim it's all the same area so yeah it was great it was fantastic having the becker family there and uh yeah you, you could just kind of go in it to the same school so all the kids were like oh yeah we've got a we've got a stellar dwarf population you know like we we, we weren't weird to them Right. You know, because you got you got three of us at that point. Did any so of your fine. friends back then drive? Like, oh, I was the I was the first one to drive. Ironically, right. how <laughs> talk to me about getting yeah. your driver's license and how the, the the freedom how but how does that like? Do you have to? Are they prepared for that at the DMV? Oh no, you got to call <laughs> and be like, listen, we can't do standard issue. <laughs> There's uh, there's some adjustments. You gonna need a special instructor. There's some today. adjustments that have to be made. So, so what do you? All right. So what do you have to do? Uh, well, you show up in your car. Obviously, yeah, my like car, w w w which is adjusted. And for those of you who are curious, I just put pedal extenders on my car. And I, I, and what are I they? Sit. Are they like? Are they like blocks? Is that uh, a pedal it, extender? It's, or? it's like a. It's like a pedal that attaches onto your pedal. Okay. And then there's a rod, and then there's it. another pedal on Got top it. of that. So you push like that. So, uh, yeah, like, cause I, when, when I sit, like when we're sitting down, I'm as tall as you, like I'm my, yeah. my, my torso is average size. So I didn't need like to sit on phone books or anything like that. You don't and, need to brag uh, about yeah. it. I know I'm only 5'10". <laughs> All right. I'm average. And then, um, I could reach the steering wheel just fine and all that. So all, I'm lucky in that all I needed was pedal extenders. So we just hooked it up to my car, went in, took the test, aced it. First time, got my license, and now and what, sixteen. You got yeah, it? sixteen, and now I'm the kid because I was the first one of all my friends. Yeah, so I, I like you picking them up. And oh shit. my god, I I I was invited to all the parties. <laughs> I'll bet because Brad had a car. <laughs> Brad had a car and could break dance. So I was invited to all the parties. Every party needed me. You know, so uh, it, it it was it was fantastic. My first car, my parents got me a uh, yeah. What was it? Toyota Tacoma. Uh, they wanted a two seater because they didn't want all the people yeah to be in been, the car right. with me. So then, but then it's like it's a truck. They're so going, it chuck them in. Yeah, yeah that's right. They're going <laughs> right which was back. <laughs> infinitely more unsafe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we all have these moments where you 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 look back on your teens and your early twenties. You're like, how am I still alive? I, I should have killed many kids yeah. in the back seat of my truck with my drive. I think the same thing. Just yeah. all everybody sitting in pickup trucks and all that yeah. back then, like at sixteen oh. and driving like a fucking idiot. And yeah, shit. there's se there's several people. One 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 time, three girls hopped in my uh, hopped in the truck bed, not in like, a sexy way, but like to try to like make like like. Um, make fun of me or like make me not drive off or i forget the circumstances all behind it and i was like fuck it and i gunned it and started like taking turns like, <laughs> like that. and they were screaming <laughs> holding on for dear life i'm like and i and i look back on those times like oh my god that was like i'm so lucky you are lucky i'm so lucky killed three people. oh i'm yeah. so lucky one of them we all are out. we've all done dumb shit yeah exactly so do you get any leeway or any love when you get pulled over by the cops yes and uh for two reasons one more than the, more so than the dwarf stuff is is we're funny 
So we can, if, if you can get a cop to laugh. You're out of that ticket. Oh, my God. You're out of that have ticket. Have a line. Have yep. a line ready. Have a uh, yeah, bit. Yeah. I have a bit for, for, for when I get pulled over. And I'll tell you my bit because you, you don't need to be a dwarf to do this bit. Um, so over here at Universal Studios, they sell these. Uh, and they do it on, Ho on Hollywood Boulevard, too. You go down to the little tourist stores. They sell these... Um, they, they sell these like fake Oscars that like fake yeah. mini mm -hmm. Oscars and they say things like best teacher, best mom, stuff like that. I found one one day that said best police officer and I was like done. Bought it, chucked it in my glove box. You just keep it in there. <laughs> so when I get pulled over, <coughs> I just got that Oscar just sitting there and I, and I go congratulations officer, you got me, you won. And then they look down and they're like, you son of a bitch. And like, <laughs> they're laughing. And the best part is they can't keep it because if they keep it, it's a bribe. That's right. So they always give it back to me and they you go, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, keep using that yeah, there. I've got that like four tickets that way. <laughs> I'm speeding. You know how fast uh, you were going? I, I don't, but you do. And that's why you win, officer. Yeah, that is great. Dude. Oh, I got out of so many tickets. Four tickets because of that thing. What other, uh, where, what other areas in your life do you see where people give you leeway? Mm, um, leeway. You know, it's just in... I, I found out that in stand-up. Like, I can say some things that your average comic can't say because... I'm not threatening. And when I was single, talking to women, like if a large man said something to a woman, like I might as well just throw you in the back of my truck and take you home and duct tape you. Like that's, yes. fuck you. Yeah, right. That yeah. that can happen. Like right. that's, but if I say that, not that I did to, to that level, but like I could say things to where the, the, the woman goes, oh, you you can't. Right. You like, and I would joke, to them about that as well like yeah you know that if for any reason i tried something you could stop it like it's not like it's <laughs> like just hold me yeah there, there, there's nothing there's nothing i could do nothing so like i can't do that kind of stuff you know so uh in that that way i got some leeway where uh some people wouldn't but uh yeah that, that that'd be about it there's there's other things that are harder you know shop clothes that's harder gotta go to it gotta have a good tailor in your life if you're if you're if you're a little person uh that's harder but uh oh, you ever uh, been in fights like especially at the conventions never. with people getting wasted there's never been well, you've seen them but you've I've never been them. in them yeah. i've only been other than that kid beating you up that yeah, time yeah i've only been in like one fight ever that one not not that one like high school what happened oh i was at a I, it, it, I I was at the beach with this girl that I, that that I, I was friend zoned, but uh, I was trying to not be friend zoned. Turned out she turned out to be a lesbian, so there's a good reason why I was friend zoned. Uh, but uh, I was I was at the beach, and this one guy, she was very attractive, and uh, this one guy came over. And he thought that we were together, and, and he literally walked up to her and got mad. Like he was like, "Why the fuck are you with him?" Like. You were the midget, like you'd be with a real man, really, and, and, and stuff like that. And she got mad at him, like, "Well, why can't I be with him?" And I'm sitting there, like, "Yeah, why can't you be with me?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, I like girls. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, all right, let's make some shit happen. Uh, so, like, and he said something to me along the lines of, like, when I spoke up, I was like, "Dude, just move on. Like, we're fine. We're just, yeah. we're just here after having fun." He said something along the lines of, "Like, shut up, midget. This is between me and the bitch." And I, Whoa. and I was like. All right, and like I was like 16 years old. I got a truck. I don't like, but I knew that at that point, them be fighting words. So thankfully, though, uh, I wrestled in high school. So I just started. You did? Yeah. So I just started charging the guy. And I'll tell and I'll tell you this. Here's here's the thing that I found out from that fight, and by almost getting into several fights, as as I think it's Brett Ernst has this great joke that white people have almost fight stories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so true. I think, I think I it's love Brett Ernst. Ernst. I, I hope it's his joke. But yeah, he's like all like black like blacks and Mexicans are like, no, I beat this guy up. I fought this guy. White people are like, dude, let me tell you. I was, I, I was about it, to hit it, this. If my <laughs> friends weren't there that night. <laughs> it's such a great bit and I love Brett Ernst. Anyway, um, so like <clears throat> I found out that when 
because no one expects the dwarf to get angry and get, and, and get physical. Well, I know from what you told me, you're strong as fuck, obviously, at that yeah. age especially. So, like, but when a dwarf gets mad, legit mad, and if a little person says to another guy, like, I'm going to fucking kill you, they believe it. They, they think it's like, oh, dude, that's the little dude in the Bruce Lee movie. He's not doing shit because he knows when he starts doing shit, it's over. Like, it's done. So... If, if if a dwarf has the confidence, you'll you'll scare really big guys, really big guys. Uh, I got another story. Um, I'm not allowed uh, to get into the details of this story. I'll tell you off air. I like that. Already. But uh, I there was a football player, a, a collegiate uh, D1 football player, who was trying to do stuff to a woman, and I got him to stop because uh, I yelled at him with that kind of confidence. This guy could squash anybody. But I was yelling at him. He's like, oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. And, and, he, and he like backed off. And I didn't even know this event occurred until years later when the, when the woman saw me and reminded me. Oh. I had blacked it out because I saw red. And like I didn't, I I didn't know. But then the girl reminded me, and I was like, "Wait, what? <laughs> like I did that? That's stupid. That guy could have killed me. <laughs> <laughs> like, why did I do that?" It's like I thought you were so brave. Yeah, You're like I was stupid. Yeah, what the fuck? That, was, that, was, that was very dumb. But yeah, I'm not allowed to give the specific details of that story. Uh, but yeah, so on the beach thing, I I ran at the guy, and he sees the guy running at him. He sees a dwarf running at him. He 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 was just in shock, and because I had a wrestling background. Double got, leg. Got a, yeah, yeah got a nice I double wrestled. leg. That's what I want to ask you about. There you go. Got a nice double leg. Took him down. Put him on the ground. He's trying to get up. And then at the time, uh, I, I'm, I still am into pro wrestling. But some of those pro wrestling moves, they you, work. They work. That's why you're not allowed to do yeah. them. <laughs> you can so, kill somebody. Yeah. Kick a little sand in their eyes, yeah. a little Mr. Fuji <laughs> powder, Fuji. and then do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> God Almighty! <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, I double legged him, took him down. He he was on his back. He's trying to get. So he rolls over on his stomach. Which as a wrestler, you're like, thank you, thank you. That's where that's where I want yeah. you. So he rolls over on his stomach, and then I got him in a cross face and just like lean back. It 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 was a move that Daniel Bryan does now, but back in the day it was a wrestler named Chris Benoit. He did it. We don't like to talk about Chris Benoit because, you know, he murdered his wife and kids. He did. So that's not a good thing. So uh, I'm pulling back and like I'm he's screaming in pain and I'm making him say like, apologize, apologize right now. And he, and he apologized. It was the best. And then like, I love that you made him apologize yeah. for, for her, not for anything he said to you. Or yeah. anything. I saw you point to her. Yeah. He was way meaner to her than You're he was to dude. me. So like I, that that's the only fight I've ever been in. I've never been. So you're one. You're undefeated. Yeah, that's bam. I, by the way, that's what I would also say. Yeah, I'm undefeated. I'm undefeated. In it fights. doesn't matter. It's only one and L. Yeah, I started. I tried to start a fight at a Halloween party one time. You tried to. Why did you want to? Well, all right. Th this is perfect. So I was dressed as a pimp, right? And like I got the, the the suit, the boas, the hat, the funny jewelry, and I have a white cane. And I'm at this party. And I see this guy walk up behind this girl who's wearing, I think, th I think she's trying to do like a Lady Marmalade, like that music video was all lace and corset and stuff like that. And then he kind of went up and under and like did that. And you saw it? Without, yeah, without her permission. And when in one motion, I flipped the cane over so the jewel was on the outside, the, the, the thick part, and just crack and like cracked him across the, the back Damn. yeah like just cracked him and he was fuck and then he turns around and be like, i'll kill you and i just and i'm standing who there. did that <laughs> who did that oh yeah did down, down here i'm like waving the cane like down there. so he so he looked down saw me <coughs> and then uh and then all, then all all his friends were like should we kick his ass or whatever and i looked at the guy and i was like do you want me to tell them what you did because i will or we can just walk away and don't do that again. And he was like, oh, motherfucker, you're lucky. And almost fight stories. You're, yeah, you're, that's right. You're lucky I don't blah, blah, blah. And then he walked away. But, yeah, that's the closest uh, I got into a fight. I don't really, I don't really fight. As a, as a dwarf and as a funny guy, you kind of figure out how to get out of fights. Yeah, well, that's the whole goal. More than get, get into them. them. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like to fight. That's not, that's not my thing. <laughs> um. 
So I had asked you coming mm-hmm. in some things we could talk about. And yeah. one of the things you wrote down yeah. was something about your father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we talk about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. We'll talk about that. Um, so my dad. Uh, How old your dad right now? Right now he's 73. Okay. Yeah, 73. I actually just got back from a trip to France. He's doing it. Um, but yeah, he uh, about, about six years ago. Uh, six years ago, my dad had, had had problems with skin cancer his whole life because uh, he played a lot of golf as a kid and never wore sunscreen. I mean, no one did back then. Yeah, just went out there and did it. So what, moles so, and, and... Moles, and he, he, he'd come home and you have a little bandage on. We'd be like, what's that? He goes, ah, I, got, I had to get some skin cancer burned off today. So, uh, and, and we always were like, oh, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. I Look, I count me among the ignorant ones that did not know how serious skin cancer can get we just had yeah. jeremiah Watkins on i was telling you i didn't even a couple know weeks it. ago it's, yeah and he's a uh, skin cancer survivor yeah so uh and then one day about five years ago it's like oh no now it's come back and it's not something you can just burn out and flick out and, or freeze off it's it's legit. And how did he find out? What was the what put what made him go get checked out? Uh, he had to go get some skin uh, skin cancer burned off, and he did. And then the doctor was like, "Hold on, like that's different." Got it tested, and then it turns out it was like like something you don't want. So uh, yeah, so he got that news. Had to tell it to the family. Um, and where what oh, stage was it in? Jeez. Uh, it was it was not stage four, but it wasn't good. My dad didn't want to be specific with it. I know I know it wasn't stage four, but I know it wasn't nothing. But all this time yeah. of him going through the years, no one ever noticed that, or did something just change? Um, no, it, it, it's the thing where we always noticed it. He would have scars. He's got scars on his arms and on his back from when skin cancer is removed. But then it was never a problem. Like... It was just burned off, yeah, gone. burned off, gone. Like, cause gone. there's moles and then there's moles. Like, you can get a mole taken off before it gets to a bad point, but then once it gets to that bad point, you know, I'm I'm not a doctor. I don't know the specifics of it. That's what Jeremiah said too. He had a specific mole that yeah. was spotted by his girlfriend separately, his mom, and separately Jeez. of all fucking things, he's doing a uh, uh, roast battle and he had a shirt off for the wave and a woman in the audience was a doctor and came up to him after the show and said, you have to go get that looked at right now. And he's, there was just three women at three different times wow. who did not talk to each other. Yeah. One being a doctor and a stranger and yeah. he went and that's when they found out how bad it was. Wow. Yeah. I mean, uh, so he's got that and then We've heard skin cancer, skin cancer, but then, you know, he says the words, you know, okay, so my first round of chemo is, and we're like, whoa, oh shit, okay, now it's real. Did they put the dye in them and see how far it spread? Yeah, and- all that jazz. And, you know, seeing seeing what chemo does to someone, I mean, Lord knows uh, we all know somebody, but you see the person that they like change. Like my dad's already always been kind of you know pretty healthy. Whew. That's it gets it, he he lost so much weight yeah. and he's been bald my whole life. So we didn't I wouldn't have to do the whole losing hair thing. But yeah, it just changes him as a as a person going through so much pain and uh, doing the chemo, doing the radiation. Uh, he he'd have to go and uh, wear these like when doing the radiation he has to wear this like it looks like a cheesecloth and it's like a screen over your whole face yeah over your face to cover to stop the radiation from hitting like the the wrong parts of you so it was brutal man and uh one of the things that i kept doing is now we were in kind of a role reversal like my dad never allowed me to feel sorry for myself because of my dwarfism so i never allowed him to feel sorry for himself Good for you because of the skin cancer, I would, I would tell him to constantly like, hey, let's get out there, let's do some stuff, let's let's go, let's go. And and uh, there were there were times when he didn't want to fight, and uh, I was like, no, we like you got you got a you got a daughter that's gonna have kids soon, like you're you got to do this for them, you know, because we got we got more events in our lives that we want you around yeah. for. Yeah. And how so, so? How long was the whole process like? 
so he came home and basically dropped that bomb on you guys like that. My chemo starts, boom. Yeah. And then he yeah. went right went in. Right into it. And he went to uh, UCI Medical Center. Shout out to UCI because uh, they're fantastic there. And um, I, 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 I remember that it was about, I want to say, six to eight months of treatment. And uh, no, 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 shit, no. That's a long time. No, it was longer than that. Longer? Yeah, because uh, it's hard to get into specifics, but um, so he's about, we we hear that he's going to go in for another appointment, and this is the appointment where they've done all the rounds of chemo and radiation, and they go like, all right, now we're going to look at you again, see what's up. And we know that uh, we know that if the answer is, uh, if, if if it's good news, then fuck yeah, good news. If it's bad news, it means there's not, like, we'll try again, but it's probably not going to work. Like, really? Yeah, it's to that point. So, and and also because of my dad's age at the time, like, it's, it's, it's hard for anyone to go through Absolutely. chemotherapy. Anybody. So to, you know, if you're, you're 25 in the prime of your life, chemorexia. If you're 70 years old, you got some heart problems, you got a hip thing, you got that, 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 like it, it, it fucking takes you out. It takes you out. So, uh, I remember the appointment was going to happen while I was going to be at the comedy works in Denver. Okay. And, uh, so I'm doing I'm doing the show in Comedy Works. I know the appointment is in the morning, and that hospital's here in California. Yeah, okay. and that uh, UCI is University of California Irvine. So, oh, Irvine, okay. uh, so I'm watching the phone like all day, all day. I'm watching the phone because I know that call, and when that and when that call comes, I know that that's going to be the call. So I'm just I, like I'm watching the phone, and no ring, no ring, no ring. Gets to the show, and uh, the comics. Uh, my op my opening act is on stage. When my feature act is on stage, phone rings, and it's my mom's ID. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Okay, here we go. And I an I answer the phone, <coughs> and uh, I, I I go, hey mom. And then the first words out of her mouth were, he's in remission, which right. is like, oh, I remember I I got that news and I just fell I fell on the ground and immediately just burst into tears on the on the on the com comedy works south green room floor I know where you're in the yeah. basement down there. yeah and uh no this is the south all oh, out there in the south yeah, club yeah. yeah so uh I'm just I, I'm I'm crying and now the other the, the host and the other comic backstage they don't know the news that I just got they just see me. <laughs> yeah. They just see me on the phone and, and within a floor. second just blah, like and everything. And when they say ugly cry, ugly cry. The ugliest of cries. Just letting out every bit of emotion that you've stored up and tried to be strong and tried to be good so dad doesn't see that you're scared and all that. All of that is coming off. It's like you're shedding a skin. And uh then, like, I look up at the comics, I see the the horror on their face. I'm like, my dad, I, you understand? Like, he's, he's cancer, and like, they hear cancer, like, oh fuck, and they're like, no, no, he's good. Like, <laughs> found out he's in remission, and um, so then, and lit literally, as that's happening, the feature closes, host goes out there. And I'm wiping tears from my face as they say, like, please welcome the stage, <laughs> yeah, right. Brad Williams. And I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> so I go out there. I go out there and they have a they have a mirror right before the door at the comedy works. And I look at myself in the mirror right before I go out on stage. And it's obvious I've been crying. It's just red, well, the whole thing. You know I've been crying. So I'm like, all right, I got to talk about this. So I, I go out, do a couple of introductory standard jokes that I know are going to do well. And then I go like, hey, so uh, this isn't what my face normally looks like. Here's what's up. Uh, and, I, and I start talking to the yeah. audience. And um, I ended up doing about 25 minutes just off the top of my head, just on my dad. And how he raised me, how his teachings, everything like that. 
and how much I care about the guy. And that 25 minutes, because they, they, they recorded that set that night, I listened to it. I'm like, oh, that's I got something here. And uh, that have you it, ever let your dad hear that? So that 25 minutes became my second Showtime special, Great. which is called Daddy Issues. Fuck yeah! Which is why that special is called Daddy Issues. And the best part about that is he was in the audience when I recorded that special. Oh, that's amazing. So I have that's what I close on all of the all of the cancer stuff and all of his teachings and everything like that. And as I'm doing the bit in my special, I go, don't look at him. Do not look at him. Because if you look at him, you're going to lose it. And as I'm doing the bit, I look down, I see him, and I see he's crying. And I'm like, <laughs> like <laughs> So then you Gotta see it. Got to reshoot the left. Yeah. So you, you, do you cry on it? Yeah. If you see it close enough, you can see oh, it? Oh, no. There's no if you see it close <laughs> enough. There's... Oh, Brad's crying right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's got this new closer yeah, where he cries, yeah, where he for cries. Five <laughs> But <laughs> I just saw that break down. It's really it's really innovative. Uh I was Nanette before Nanette, damn it. Uh, <laughs> so in in the special I close with something that I've never closed with before because it was in the moment. I'm crying. My dad's there. I say my dad is in the audience tonight. And like, he beat this shit, and he's he's in the audience tonight. Audience is giving him a standing ovation. Oh, wow. My dad's up there throwing a fist in the air, and I'm like, fuck yeah. And then I got to say something that I hope we all get to say to our fathers. Where I can it, promise you I won't, yeah. but go ahead. <laughs> I might be able to write it and fucking stick it in the ground and see if they can still read it. <laughs> oh, that's the darkest shit. <laughs> it's so horrible. I'm definitely, whatever it's you're so about funny. to say, so I'm funny. definitely never going to be able to yeah, say this to my dad. so funny. <laughs> ah, that was so good. Um, So it, the thing I, I hope that we all get to say to our, our, our dads at some point is thank you. And um, I just got up to be there and for my special tell them thank you thank you for making me the man i am today thank you for showing me how to fight thank you for being strong for me and uh you know and i'll never forget it and that and that and that i love you and got to say that at the special and you see my dad's crying and i'm crying and then i and then i and then i say thank you good night and the cool part is not only that I got to document that, that I have that moment. If you watch my special daddy issues, I think you can watch it for free on YouTube. Probably it's on Amazon prime, but eh, watch it on YouTube. It's free. Um, I mean, but I, I love Amazon <laughs> anyway. Uh, so you, you, you see how it ends and I'll get people that come up to me after, uh, you know, at, at shows and stuff and be like, dude, like I watched it cause you're funny. And then you got to, fucking lay that thing on yeah, me at the end but but bomb. but but he's like but a, a lot a lot of people are very supportive of it and the cool thing is is i get people that come up to me and say you know i lost my dad to cancer or i lost my brother and my mom whatever and the coolest part is that they're not because i thought when people first started saying that to me i thought they'd be mad at me like why why did your dad get to live right and my mom didn't or my aunt or whatever didn't me, sure. yeah i thought that's that's what was going to happen and that's not what happens it turns out people are just happy that someone beat it that someone yeah. fought this thing and came out on the other side so and that support on the road and hearing those stories oh dude it it it, it makes you every gamut of emotion like you you, you go through it and uh and but I'm so thankful for every person that comes up and shares those stories. I'm glad I get to listen. I'm glad they get to tell me. I've had people tell me stuff. They're like, I've never like I don't talk about this. And I go, it's okay. Talk about it to me. It's yeah. fine. Um, you hear that, Alabama? <laughs> <laughs> Alabama, Brad's talking to y'all. We're talking. <laughs> uh, tell me stories. So that's 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 this. That's this. Uh, that's the silver lining on a very, very dark cloud. Is that um, people get to uh, pe people get to hear a story of success. People get to have a little bit of hope, and uh, 
nothing makes me happier than when people come up to me after shows and go, hey, man, how's your dad? That's great. Like, because I know they watch the special, and I know that I just gave them an hour of entertainment, right. and they're not asking for – they don't care about the photo. They don't care about the CD, DVD, T-shirt that they're buying afterward. All available, they're, Alabama. All available. All available. Family the show, Alabama. Com. You should pick that up. Uh, they're not caring about that. They're not, hey, what can you do for me? They're, hey, how's your dad? Right. And that means so much when people ask that. that I want to ask, how well. is your dad? You said this was six years ago, right? Yeah, dad's still, dad's still in remission. He still gets checked up. Great. What? How Doing often? Good. What is a checkup for something like that? Once like, a year, twice yeah, a year? Yeah, like once a year. Okay. Just kind of go in there, see what's up. Uh, there was a little scare at one point, but it, it turned out not to be a scare, which was very thankful. Uh, but yeah, it, it's... Uh, He's doing great, and he's uh, like I said, he just got back from a trip to France. He went to see the cliffs in Normandy. He's always wanted to see them, you know, see where see where D Day happened, and uh, he got to do that. So, yeah, he's got to he he's got to hold grandchildren. You know, he's got That's to play great. with grandkids. He's got to meet my wife. Uh, so life li life is good, and man, there's one thing that having a scare like that will do is it'll make you so thankful for bonus time. Yeah, bonus time. Like, whether I mean, it be yeah, you're, it's all bonus time. Yeah, yes, it's all bonus time now. So, whatever you get, and uh, my only message would be to not wait for the bonus time. That's right. Do whatever you get your do. moles checked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. real. Get what do whatever you're gonna do in I'm the going. time you have I'm, now. Because of Jeremiah, I've already yeah. made an appointment with my doctor. I'm like, he's like, I don't like to look at that one. I'm like, let's cut these motherfuckers. Yeah, off. let's just let's just let, chop let, it off. Yeah, let's just get it out there. Cause you know, I mean, we all think as we're working on our tans when we're in our yeah. teens that it's yeah, the best thing that we can be doing. Uh, no, <laughs> don't do that shit. It's funny because sometimes people make fun of me. Like I'll go to a party or whatever, where or a pool party, take your shirt off. People go, Ah, Brad's pasty. I'm gonna go. Good. <laughs> That's right. Brad, skin cancer free Good. is what the fuck I, I am. I am. Yeah. I, I'll take pasty. I'll take pasty any day of the damn week. So, yeah, I'm I'm always very thankful when people are like, you're pasty as fuck. I'm like, eh, I'm not having skin cancer, so we're good. So, yeah, uh, I, 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 would, I would say that, and I would say don't wait for bonus time. Say say what you're going to say to people in, in, in the time you have, you know, um, uh, don't, don't, don't wait for the for the catastrophic event that, 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 that makes you gain perspective. Hear those events from other people, gain that perspective and take advantage of the time you have now. That is well said, brother. Thank you, my friend. Hear that Alabama. Hear that Alabama. <laughs> well, brother, thank you so much for coming on and opening up. I really appreciate it. I know that's not yeah. easy to do. No, but, it, but, it, but it was fun. It feels good to tell these stories and you make me feel safe, Ryan. I love you, brother. <laughs> Thanks, man. Love you, too. Uh, please, one more time, promote whatever you'd like. Absolutely. Uh, my podcast, the About Last Night podcast with, with my heterosexual life mate, Adam <laughs> Ray. I stole that line from Kevin Smith. It's not mine, but I think it's great. Heterosexual that life is mate. great. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so please subscribe to that uh, on Twitter at Funny Brad, uh, on Instagram at Brad Williams Comic. Uh, all my tour dates, bradwilliamscomedy.com. And don't forget, Alabama, uh, I am coming to you uh, June 21st and 22nd at the Star Dome in Birmingham, Alabama. I will be there June 23rd, Zanies in Nashville, and then Philadelphia. I'm going to come your way June 27th do the 29th that's gonna be at helium comedy club so go see me there those are my dates those are the plugs and uh i really appreciate you having me on my friend thank you brother uh definitely go see brad live he's fantastic and uh this has been a great episode dude thank you thanks brad. i'm ryan sickler on all social media ryan talk to y'all next week